Hello and welcome to Celebrity Radio's third vlog, Theatre Exposed, with me Alex Belfield, talking about the things that no one else is talking about in theatre. Whilst other vloggers are saying everything's wonderful so they get free tickets, we dig deep and look at the grids and find out what's really going on. We're going to talk about plays and why they should be banned. We're going to talk about Dickhead Tapeface and why he thinks that his fans are creepy. And we're going to begin by talking about a really sad reality that the Blackpool Opera House is doomed. And here's why. I've been looking at the grids over the next few weeks and it is utterly depressing. This was a temple of show business. 3,000 seats. Do you remember that wonderful season that Michael Barrymore did in 97, I think it was? And he had sellout shows for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. Well, now they can barely sell a ticket. It is utterly depressing when you look here. Horrible Christmas. This is only two months away. Look at that grid. It's shocking. The Sound of Music comes in February. This is a Bill Kenwright production, I think. That's back on the road. Good Lord, they've got a long way to go to sell that. I mean, people are saying, oh, well, there's time to sell it. Well, OK, let's look at Priscilla next week. There are more empty seats than there are full seats. This is right at the front of this 3,000-seater. Look at tomorrow's calendar, girls. I mean, it's more or less empty. It must be shocking for stars to have to walk out to this. It's really sad to me that the Blackpool Opera House is struggling and I think it's just a reality that it is one of the most deprived areas in Britain. Blackpool is not doing well. I think the theatre community is struggling there and they've got that beautiful Blackpool Grand that we used to tour with Ken Dodd for years and years and years. In fact the last time I saw Ken was at the Blackpool Grand. To be honest it was my favourite night ever in a theatre. He was 90, it was magical and it was in that palace of show business filled to the rafters. It was just glorious. And then you look at this opera house, which is just this huge B&Q scale theatre that nobody wants to go in. Is it because of the shows? I mean, we look at the grids. Priscilla's not selling. Calendar Girls is not selling. The plays are a nightmare. We're going to get onto plays in a minute. But my God, these shouldn't even be in the grand. They wouldn't be filling the grand, let alone the opera house. It is my belief that this place is just too big. I mean, there are the odd exceptions where they sell out. I know Jay McDonald. Donald does incredibly well and sells out there. Peter Kay, when he does those one-off things, sells out. But he'd sell out anywhere. Jane's selling out all over the country. But week by week, there are literally one, two or three hundred people in this 3,000-seater theatre. What is the point? I noticed this as a trend. I was looking at Richmond Theatre. They don't have anybody in either. I was looking at Snow White, for example, at uh, Christmas, their pantomime with Joe Brand. It's, it's a disaster. I mean, the grids are really grim. And then you look at their other shows. My God, there's no one in for hardly any of them. It's just depressing. And then we look at plays. I've really become obsessed with plays and why they're not selling over the last few months. It started with Rough Crossing earlier in the year, which was one of the biggest disasters I've ever seen in this country. I mean, I think there were some performances where there were 25, 30 people in. The grids were just astonishingly bad. A Bill Kenwright production who continues to pop out these plays as we're going to talk about over the next few weeks. I mean, this guy has an outdated philosophy that any national press are banned. He won't allow any credible reviewers in. He only allows in local papers who are in contra deals with theatres, so they're never going to give a bad review. A moronic philosophy. But nevertheless, he keeps trying to put plays out and they're all failing. I mean, I can't see a play that he's putting out that is a success. The only things people seem to be going to are comedians, musicals and the big music stars. So why are there so many plays on the road doing so badly? This is interesting to me. We look at Little Miss Sunshine this year, which I didn't particularly like. But look at this grid. The day before the performance in Leicester, this was the grid. I mean, laughably bad. This was across the UK. Colour Purple at Curve was a disaster. They had to give two for ones. I'm looking at Toast. These are grids from Richmond that we were talking about earlier. Disaster. Prism that's on the week after next. Total disaster. Look at these grids. The Entertainer has been one of the biggest disasters this year with Shane Ritchie, and you would have thought it would have done well. Look at it in Manchester. They've had to close off half of the stalls. I've never, ever seen this in my life, ever. This was the Milton Keynes Theatre. Another theatre here that's just empty seat after empty seat. Dame Edna had a wonderful line about this. She said, don't think of them as empty seats, darling. They're seats for people who died on the way here. Think of them more as tombstones. Well, they are. I mean, look at this. Exorcist. This is a Bill Kenwright. Next week in Manchester. Empty. Then we look at The Lady Vanishes. Another Kenwright. This is in Sheffield. I mean, just a disaster. I mean, how can you have A, B and C row empty? Unbelievable. Gaslight by Bill Kenwright. I mean, look at this. The circle's closed. 
half of the front is empty. I mean, these poor actors going out in these tawdry plays. Ten Times Table, another one that's just got seat after seat available in Sheffield next week. Look at this. Amelie in the West End is just not selling. This tour has been a disaster across the UK. It's coming to the West End and it just isn't selling. It's a really tricky time for theatre and I wonder where it will go from here. Touring theatre is going to really have to up its game next year. I mean, you've got Michael Harrison putting out that Carol King thing again next year. Beautiful. I mean, who wants to see it again? It wasn't even any good the first time. These cash cows of shows, I don't think they can just keep bringing them out and again and again and again. Bill Kenwright, I understand, has lost Joseph. He will be uh, no longer the producer of that show from next year. It's been given by Lord Webber to Michael Harrison. He will be touring it next year. And Bill Kenwright will not have the contract. Michael told me that himself. So we uh, look forward to seeing what he's going to do with that. Will he put the Palladium show on the road or will he reinvent it in another way? A bit sick of these reimaginings. They don't seem to be working. The public aren't falling for it. There you go. So my conclusion with plays then, let's not bother. Just don't bother putting any more on. They're a waste of time. Audiences don't want them. They're not going. They're not interested. Let's save everybody's time and effort and the dignity of the actors who are walking out to no one. It's a shambles. Producers, beware. These are facts. These are not my opinions. These are the grids. Day in and day out. Tomorrow, the next day, next week. I'm not making this stuff up. We speak facts here. One thing I want to talk about before we leave is Tapeface and these astonishing quotes that he gave a newspaper article. I was the first to call out Tapeface a few months ago. This is what we do here. We don't like bullshit and we see a lot of it around. Tapeface, Tapeface is a guy who was on America's Got Talent and did incredibly well. We like him as a man. Sam Wills is a great comedian, but he has a philosophy that he is a brand, not a comedian. Therefore, he can get understudies to play the part of Tapeface when he's busy or doing a show somewhere else, and it's fine. We were made aware of this ruse in Las Vegas, and we did a bit of digging. We found out that actually, whilst he was on the UK tour for three weeks, the show was done by an understudy. But he says, you see, Tapeface is a character, he says. In shorthand, they are Tapeface 2 and Tapeface 3. He's got two of them who cover for him. We are growing the empire due to public demand, Will says in the podcasts, which is the Las Vegas Review Journal interview. He says he's the same as Blue Man Group. You are not. You're a comedian. You're a guy who was on America's Got Talent and people want to see you. Stop screwing your audience and taking money and then not turning up. It's disgraceful. Don't know how this man sleeps at night. John Katz points out that some people who come to the show when he's not on are disappointed. I mean, you only have to go on TripAdvisor to see how furious people are when they get a fake face, not a tape face. I have to acknowledge that those people are what we consider super fans. And those are the ones who are sometimes borderline obsessed. Will says, they are obsessed with me, which I find creepy and a bit weird. Sorry, because I have no interest in anything to do with celebrity culture. I like to have a very normal life. Listen, douchebag, you're a guy making money out of the general public. If you don't like the fact that you are a celebrity, a star and a headliner in Las Vegas, fuck off and go and be a binman. Go and clean the streets. Go and work in a cafe. Serve meals in a restaurant. You are a headliner in Las Vegas denying the fact that you have popularity and people who want to see you and you think you can take the night off and put one of your understudies on on $250 a night whilst you reap the profits and go to some casino to headline for $10,000. This is a disgrace and you should be ashamed of yourself. I've never heard of anything more insulting than to call a fan creepy and they're obsessed by the fact that they expect to see you. What next? Celine Dion uses an impersonator at the Coliseum because she can't be asked to turn up. Rod Stewart can't be bothered to do his UK tour, so he sends Rod Stupid, a similar version who looks like him, but he's 40 years younger with black hair. This is ludicrous. Tapeface, you are literally bonkers if you think that fans are creepy and obsessed because they expect you to turn up to the show in which you are pictured and which you are named. The show was given to you after you were appearing on America's Got Talent week in and week out and given that platform to get your show. Grow up or leave Las Vegas and leave show business. How dare you insult the people who pay your mortgage and call them creepy, vile, disgusting and unashamedly arrogant. How dare you? I hope your show closes and I hope you never work in show business again. It's people like you that ruin the industry. You should be ashamed of yourself. 
And that is this week's podcast. We only give you facts here at Celebrity Radio. Right, we'll see you next week. See what we can talk about then. You've been listening to another vlog by me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz, exposing theatre 2019. By the way, Moulin Rouge is coming to the Piccadilly Theatre in 2021. You can click on our exclusive review of the Broadway show at the end of this video and also watch the first two of our vlogs. They'll all come up in little boxes at the end of this. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon. Ta-da.